have a few things, like mantras, a few sayings in my class. One of them is um, when you go into the room, be confident. Confidence is so important. I have a director friend called Nick Cohen who comes in to do workshops, and uh, you know, I was chatting. I was like, outside of talent, what do you look for? And he's like, confidence. It's like, you don't understand the pressure directors have. The last thing they want to think about is having to build up their actors. They want actors to just come in the room, just do it, own it, and then leave. And then the director or the casting director can be like, that's someone I can trust on set. If there's 10 minutes left and we're behind schedule by six hours, I don't want to have to bring an actor who's going to be shaking. I want to be like, they can do it. So confidence, even if you're not confident, fake it. Don't ever, ever, ever let them know you're nervous because I promise you that is usually like a no straight away because it's like, how can I trust you on set with 200 people, extras, big actors sometimes, lots of crew and stuff, and you're nervous in a room like this. And I know it is nerve-wracking, you know it is, but you have to hide. If your leg's shaking, you hold it still. You just pretend to be confident and then it, and it comes through. Um, always understand that when you're um, going to an audition, there's so many reasons why you won't book that job that you have no control over. You look too much like the lead. You look nothing like the lead. So all the thing, the mentality which I tell my students is you go in there to book the room, not the job. And what I mean by that is you go in, say to Nina Gold's office, which is you know, obviously one of the biggest ones. Don't think, oh yeah, I need to get this part. You need to go in confidently, do the best of your ability where, okay, there's a reason why you, you're not getting that part that's out of your control, your looks. But they'll remember how good you were, and they'll bring you back for the thing they're casting next week. So don't ever concentrate on that one part. I need to get that one part, because I said, you'll, you have so many reasons why you won't book that part. If you're going with the mentality is like, I'm going to show them who I am, I'm going to show my version, I'm going to show them confidently what I can do, um, you might not get that part for, like I said, reasons out of your control, but they will remember you, that's their job. If you, were, if you did a great audition and it goes down to you and, say, three others and you didn't get that, they'd be like, oh, that's, we're, we're casting the Crown series three next week, let's bring them in for that instead. If you don't get that, it'd be like Game of Thrones or whatever it is. They'll keep bringing you back and that's how it works with the reputation, so don't put pressure on yourself for that one job. And then I have three, like, good tips for casting. One of them is to um, think about shifts. You never want to play the same uh, emotion throughout the whole edition because it's boring to watch. Very, 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 very rare will an audition piece just require you to play the same. Um, so find out where that shifts are. The, the, Everything that's been given to you as an actor, there's a reason for it. There's usually a shift in there. The directors, casting directors, haven't just picked out a random bit of text and been like, just give them that, it's fine. they are like, this is a good bit, because this, this has this part of this audition in. So make sure that it, sometimes you'll start somewhere and go somewhere else and then end up where you started. That's fine, that's two shifts. But very rarely you'll start and end in the same place. So find that shift. And it doesn't have to be a big shift. It doesn't have to be angry to sad. It could be something very subtle. Um, so think about that. Don't make sure that you don't play the same emotion because it is samey and boring. Think about environment. Where are you? So say, for example, you're having a, a sensitive conversation and you're in a cafe. Maybe you might want to whisper what you're saying because you don't want the person understanding you and it's something that you you don't think about because obviously you're in a tiny room and you're just talking to someone but the only way we can ever believe you're in a cafe is by you believing it and and, we say, and it could be something as subtle as like maybe you see the way to walk past very subtly obviously when you do over m too much it's distracting very subtle and lastly is relationship who are you talking to you talk to your mum differently you talk to your sister you talk to your boyfriend talk so think about who you're speaking to is it a stranger is it an ex Sometimes they don't tell you, so you have to come up with your own things and think, what's the most interesting person I could speak to? Because if you just talk to them, you have no idea who they are. Um, and relationship also comes with a status. Is this person your boss? Are you their boss? You're going to speak to them very differently. So as long as you think about shifts, environment, relationship, um, be confident, keep it small but have loud thoughts, there's a lot. To think about that's why it's important to keep doing uh, and it takes practice but it, it, if you keep doing it it will come hey guys thanks for watching if you like what you just saw then hit the subscribe button to see more and if you want to see the full-length version of these conversations hop across to our website at actors-anonymous.com